This is the game plan and why Francis is gonna win. I decided to do this yesterday. I'm sorry. Just look at our boy in the biggest stage in the world by himself with his own gimmick promotion fighting the best boxer in the world. This is something. If you are trashing Francis Ngannou because he has no chances or something like that, you need a mental check. Because what Francis Ngannou has achieved is something. But let's be realistic. Let's talk about statistics and my predictions in terms of what I think the outcome of this fight can be. Here I am! <laughs> Any man alive wants to fight... Decision for Tyson Fury. I put 30% chance of Fury winning by decision. I put 50% chance of Fury winning with a TKO or a KO. And then for Francis Ngannou, 5% of uh, probability of winning a decision and 14% for TKO or KO. For the draw, only 1%. So it's clear I'm somewhat saying that Fury is going to win 8 fights out of 10 and Francis might win 2 of them. But this is not interesting, right? Because everybody knows that the heavyweight champion of the world in boxing is the favorite against a fighter from MMA, even if it is the heavyweight champion. There is nothing genius about this type of prediction. Now, what's interesting is how Francis Ngannou is going to win this fight. If he is if he's going to win, how he is going to win and why is likely, why it is possible for Francis Ngannou to win such fight. It's not zero chance. I read comments here and there of people saying that his uh, likelihood of winning is zero. Again, those people need mental checks. But now, going to the point. I think that this is the plan that Ngannou will deploy tomorrow night. Saturday 28th of October. Firstly, uh, you will let Tyson Fury lead the initiative because Tyson Fury is the one that everyone is expecting uh, for him, uh, that everyone is expecting him to win and take the lead. And Francis Ngannou will take advantage of that and will let Tyson Fury attack. Needless to say that Francis Ngannou will be countering, betting on defensive skills and trying to explore the opportunity to throw a big punch. Also, in the earlier rounds, I believe that Francis Ngannou will bet on body shots to try to take some energy of Tyson Fury and refrain some of Tyson Fury's movement. After those five to six rounds, I believe that Francis Ngannou's stance will change. He will be seeking or planning to seek the knockout. So in the first half of the, of the fight, Francis Ngannou will work on taking energy from uh, Tyson Fury and letting Tyson Fury attack. On the second half, and Gano will start attacking and searching the Kyo. I expect Francis to be slow in the beginning, uh, but still, when the opportunity presents himself, I think that Engano will attack it. Okay, so I think that you can expect short bursts from Francis Engano. Uh, and if you are an MMA fan, you can think of a style similar to Joel Romero. And then 
as you should expect, I think that Francis Ngannou has something that uh, most of us is not thinking about it. All right. I don't know what it is, but I think that Francis Ngannou is hiding something and um, we will only have the opportunity to see it during the fight. But the general thing, but the general thing for this uh, fight, okay, the, the game plan of this fight for me is the following. Starting slow, letting Tyson Fury drive the initiative, working on the defensive and countering as much as possible and try to find an opportunity. Body shots to Tyson Fury to make him tired and let his legs go a bit and slow him down. And after 5-6 rounds, start attacking more and going for the knockout. And adding a bit of Fator X, which I don't know what will be. So this is the game plan that I expect Francis Ngannou to follow. Now, let's have a look at the nuances that most people are overlooking. Francis Ngannou has many points on his favor for this fight and I'm going to enumerate each of them for you. Starting with Tyson Fury wanting to trade with Francis Ngannou. All right? This is something that Tyson Fury has been pretty vocal. He wants to trade with Francis Ngannou and this will expose him to take some shots. This can be very dangerous for Tyson Fury, especially if he doesn't respect Francis Ngannou power. And this leads to the second reason, which is the boxing community not having a clue about how strong Francis Ngannou is. Francis Ngannou not only has a ferocious punching power, but his overall body strength is insane. And this translates to ridiculous amounts of force from weird angles. Other thing in favor of Engano is that Engano knows Fury better than Fury knows Engano. This is important because it can help Francis Engano defining and, and tweaking his strategy for Tyson Fury. Francis Ngano is watching Tyson Fury for over four years, thinking and planning how to beat him. There is no way that Tyson Fury can be as prepared, at least from knowing his opponent, in the same way that Francis Ngano can do it, because we never seen Francis Ngano box in a professional setting. It's important to say that Francis Ngannou is not a complete novice. He has done some amateur boxing fights and he has said himself that he does boxing during his training camps. So it's not like he is starting completely from scratch. Francis Ngannou has some background in boxing and inclusively, he took lessons from Teddy Atlas, one of the first coaches of Mike Tyson. So, he is not starting from zero. That's not true. Another subject that most people are not talking about is that this is an exhibition match and for that reason, there is interest in making this a good fight, a good show. It's not expected to see Tyson Fury blasting Francis Ngannou from the start. I'm pretty sure that Tyson Fury will be 
testing Francis and Gano. <laughs> exploring his strengths and weaknesses. And unless that Francis and Gano presents great danger, Tyson Fury will carry the fight until at least half of the fight. And only then he will finish Francis and Gano. The issue with this approach is that he can get caught in the meanwhile. And this would lead to one of the greatest, if not the greatest, upset of the year. Another thing that I keep listening over and over and over by the so-called boxing experts and fans is that Ngano and Deontay Wilder are very similar. Well, I couldn't disagree more. It's more like Ngano and Deontay Wilder only have one thing in common, which is power, because all the rest is quite different. They have a very different build, endurance and overall body strength. Also, Francis Ngano, in my humble opinion, has a higher fight IQ. During his MMA career, Ngano has shown that he can make adjustments and can overcome the puzzles that fights present to him. Obviously, the biggest example of all is Sidio Gun, but also in his early stages of his MMA career, he showed that he is not only ready to finish fights standing, but also if the opportunity presents himself, he took the submission, even when he wasn't particularly well versed on that subject. He learned to be patient and contrary to Deontay Wilder, Francis Ngano acknowledges the importance of technique. So these guys are completely different, but they have one thing in common, which is power. And it's not about the tools, it's about who uses them. And I think that Francis Ngano is a much better user of his power than Deontay Wilder. Obviously, I'm having here a bit of a stretch because I have never seen Ngano in a boxing setting, but fighting wise, I think that Ngano is smarter. And we are going to see it if I'm right or wrong on Saturday. Other important note is that the responsibility is all on Tyson Fury's shoulders. Tyson Fury is expected to finish Francis Ngano, the monster of a man, whenever he decides, right? Everybody is talking about the sixth round. Well, Tyson Fury himself is talking about the sixth round. So if the fight is still going on the sixth round, the pressure will start mounting. Basically, it flips. In the beginning, the pressure is on Ngano's side to survive. And in the second half, the pressure is on Tyson Fury's side to finish. This will be the dynamic of the fight. But from Ngano's perspective, his responsibility is almost none. For Francis Ngano, winning can be getting to the end of the fight. The only scenario where Francis Ngano loses is if he loses in a very bad way, whatever that means. If the public doesn't feel like Ngano has done well, his chances of facing another big name diminishes on the short term. In the long term, that might change, but also the long term means an older 
Francis Ngannou, and he's already 37. So that's a scenario that he should avoid. And I'm pretty sure that he, in, that he and his team, they are aware that they cannot do a bad fight. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, Francis Ngannou is safe. Francis Ngannou feeds himself from naysayers and he raises to the occasion just like his friend Cristiano Ronaldo. He raised to the occasion when he was about to be released from UFC after two bad losses. He raised to the occasion against Tipe Miocic too. He raised to the occasion against Cyril Gunn. He raised to the occasion to secure an epic contract with PFL and later secured an epic fight against Tyson Fury. He is a man of the big stage and he is comfortable being the underdog. I would even say that Francis Ngannou is better being the underdog than being the favorite, the big dog. So this is perfect situation for him. He is used to be in the underdog role and this is where he performs the best. Since his arrival, Francis Ngannou gave us several demonstrations of quick learning. He learned English very fast, not only speaking a correct grammar, but also acquiring a diverse vocabulary. He has learned how to wrestle in not very long time. He learned how to be humble under the tutoring of Stipe Miocic. He also learned that you don't have to resolve all your problems alone and he seek for mental help when he had the two losses against Stipe and Derek Lewis. He also, among other things, learned about business and negotiations. And if you think this is wrong, just compare his promotion, the gimmick promotion with Eagle FC, Khabib's promotion. What was the highest profile fight that Khabib had on his promotion and compare with the first fight that gimmick promotions has. This is a tremendous display of learning skills and on a very short period of time. So I also expect that Francis Ngannou learns the fundamentals to tackle this challenge and put on a good fight. One of the most popular comments about Francis Ngannou in boxing is that he is very slow. The thing is that even slow guys can get it done in boxing and a good example of that is George Foreman. Even though he wasn't the fastest guy out there, he was still able to send people to space. So the problem isn't slowness, the problem is whether or not your opponent can't see your punches coming. If you don't telegraph your punches, you increase the chances of landing. But not only that, if you do a good setup, you can land your slow and powerful punch. Also, Francis Ngannou has trained with Michael J. White, which teaches this principle of not telegraphing punches very well and he has done this work with Francis Ngannou. This could be part of the X factor that we don't know about. He might have some setups ready to hit Tyson Fury, even with the slowest punch.
other important aspect is that Tyson Fury is not a one-punch knockout artist. That's not who he is. If he beats Francis Ngannou before the decision, it will be by sheer volume. But we know something. Francis is extremely tough. Francis can take a punch. I'm not saying that Tyson Fury cannot take a punch, but I will say that Francis Ngannou was never knocked down, never suffered a KO, and in MMA was never submitted, because he's just tough. I'm not saying that Francis is tougher than Tyson Fury, I just don't know. It's impossible to evaluate that. But I'm saying that over the course of their career, Tyson Fury for sure took more brain damage than Francis Ngannou. I want to say that Francis Ngannou is fresher for this fight. And I will say that Francis Ngannou will be more able to observe Tyson Fury's punches then Tyson Furies will be able to observe Francis Ngannou's punches. Do you have time to listen to some of my concerns? Well, my concerns are mostly concerns that would prevent Francis Ngannou of delivering a decent performance, not winning. If for one side I have um, Tyson Fury with 80% of winning chances. On the other side, I have 19% of chances for Francis of doing a good fight. See you later, guys. See you after the fight. The fight starts in a couple of hours.